And once again, show the shirt is off the cuff. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. A priest, a scoutmaster, and a cockroach walk into a bar. Bartender looks at the cockroach and says, Hey, we don't serve their kind in here. <laughs> now, why did I make that incredibly bad joke? <laughs> well, because, once again, priests, scoutmasters, and cockroaches happen to be in the news, which is something we'll get to in just a little bit. Uh, one, before I get on all of that stuff, and believe me, there's a lot of that stuff, uh, a couple of quick stories I wanted to get through here really quick. Um, not too long ago, Jason Collins came out as the very first uh, still active professional NBA player uh, in the world. Uh, he's the very first gay sports athlete in the world uh, who is still active. Okay, that is the important part there. He is active and it's a major sport okay it's the nba it's basketball okay where he plays either power forward or center so he's a big muscular dude you know so that was a big big deal there was a there were news stories all over the place on it on the internet on the tv news in the papers and magazines i mean it pretty much dominated sports illustrated for like two weeks okay so it's a big big deal now joining mr collins is the first uh, openly gay Major League Soccer player, the Los Angeles Galaxy on May 25th, completed the signing of middle fielder Robbie Rogers to a multi-year contract after acquiring the, night, the rights of the of first refusal for him from the Chicago Fire in exchange for midfielder Mike McGee. Rogers, who will wear number 14, will be officially added to the Galaxy roster upon the receipt of his international transfer certificate. He is reportedly the first openly gay player in Major League Soccer. Bravo, Robbie. Bravo, Robbie. Bravo. Um, but honestly, in the world of sports, a big fucking deal. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just not a big fucking deal in the world of sports. Not American sports, anyway. I mean, soccer worldwide, yeah. You know what? Soccer is uh, the biggest sport in the entire world, okay? Uh, more people play soccer around the world than any other sport there is. Uh, more children in the United States play soccer than any other sport uh, in the United States. Okay, I'm talking that it's even more so than basketball or baseball or football, field hockey, whatever the fuck they came up with that for, uh, <laughs> and certainly lacrosse. <laughs> but uh, no, no uh, <laughs> so. You know, as kids, when, when you are in grade school through college, soccer's a big deal. Once you get out of those places, you know what? Professional soccer, nobody really gives a flying fuck about, you know, you know, within the United States, really. I mean, we got we had David Beckham for a little while. He just retired. Uh, after that, I have no idea other than Robbie here, the name of another, you know, major league soccer player out there. Mind the rest of the world? love their soccer europe asia south america can't get enough soccer all right uh Kale, canada loves their soccer mexico loves their soccer united states only until the end of college and then we don't go fuck uh, also something interesting uh that actually directly affects my life which i thought was hysterical is the fact that more women than ever are breadwinners in the United States. Not just simply the fact that they are working and making their own money, but we're saying that uh, in about 40% of U.S. families, women are either the chief or sole breadwinner. The sole breadwinner, the chief, so the person that makes the majority of the money is the woman in about in more than 40 percent of u.s households okay uh now mind you among married couples uh that only translates to about mm, one in four in one in four uh married couples uh the woman makes more money than the man if if not being the only money maker in the entire household you know with a husband and children um uh, it's it's, it is a massive jump from, say, the 11% back in 1960. You know, here we are now, what is that, uh, 60, what is it, 53 years later, 
and now it's up to over 40 percent and a lot of that is come across because uh, there's a lot of uh, more single uh, parent homes and most of those single parent homes are led by women you know single mothers uh, be that from divorce or the baby daddy didn't want to be involved uh, whatever it takes but more often than not you know in those type of households you know the, the woman is the one making the money uh, another thing that has been driving that is uh, a big jump in uh, education since the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Uh, now that women are becoming edu more and more educated, going to school, going to college, going to law school, medical school, whatever the fuck it is they decide they feel like doing, uh, joining the military even, because of these educational opportunities, women are now able to make more money. Uh, so now, of course, the the old the old uh, adage of the glass ceiling is still out there. Everybody still believes in the glass ceiling, uh, and that's fine. Uh, the glass ceiling still does, in fact, exist. Uh, I'm not sure of the exact numbers right now, but on average, men in this country still make more money than women on average. But when you cut across different sectors. Uh, different slices of life, you will see that more and more women are actually making more money than uh, than the men in their lives. I mean, I'm a perfect example of that. Uh, you know, even when I was uh, still working full time, you know, and I was working as a bartender and I was making a pretty good living, my girlfriend was still making twice as much money as I was. Okay. She was still making twice as much money as I am. Right now, I am in school and, uh, you know, looking to finish up school so I can start working again in my new chosen career path, a uh, veterinary assistant. And even when I get a job, she's still going to make uh, twice as much money as I do because, you know what? She got herself an education in a field that she excels at. And she is very greatly valued at what it is she does. She is a forensic auditor. She is a CPA. She is, to put it to you in terms you might understand a little better, as a forensic auditor and forensics, think exactly that. She is like the CSI of CPAs. She is very, very specialized while having a great, uh, vast amount of uh, general knowledge, but she's so specialized and she's so valued that she's able to make on my, in my best year of making money, she still made twice as much as I did. All right, that's how good she is. All right. Now, uh, what I find interesting here is that uh, nearly three out of four adults surveyed uh, said that the growing number of mothers made it harder for families to raise children. Uh, and about half said that children were better off with their mothers at home, while eight percent, only eight percent, said that said the same thing about fathers staying at home. Okay. Uh, it's making it harder to raise children. Well, you know what? When you are a single mother, when your baby daddy is not involved, can't be found, or is a deadbeat, or he's in prison, well, you know what? Mom's, m mom has to raise the children and bring the money in. So you know what? These people can go fuck themselves, all right? Um, you know, this isn't leave it to beaver anymore, okay? This isn't like, you know, the bullshit you see on Mad Men, you know, back in the good old days, you know, when guys ran, you know, industry and they ran their businesses and they drank and smoked all day at work. And, uh, you know, women were expected to be at home and cook and clean and, you know, take care of the kids and help them with their homework. All the, that shit's gone. All right. <laughs> that shit is gone, gone. Uh, and it's a, and it's a, and it's a weird place for a lot of the men in these situations because, you know, there are a lot of stay at home dads now. You know, uh, I was reading about a case today. Um, let's see, what was her name? Oh, yeah, uh, Eleanor Sayer from of Kansas State University. She's a physics professor. Uh, apparently, you know, she is the the breadwinner. Her husband is a stay at home dad. He takes care of their two children, and uh, it's really weird because if there's something happens with the kids at school. They call her, even though he's listed as the emergency contact. Even worse, though, is, you know, when he decides he wants to take his two kids to the park, he is met with dirty looks and sneers and attitudes and questions and the occasional call to the police 
because he's a single man in a park. Forget the fact that he has two children with him. They ju he's just frowned upon as being a single man without a job, you know, in, in the middle of the day, hanging out at a park. You know, but nobody would say, ever say anything about that to women. Mm. Uh, now, mind you now, what I really find a circle about this is the same study that tells you that three out of four adults surveyed said that the growing number of working women, working mothers, is bad for raising children. Also, in the same study, two out of three Americans see, saw that the rise of single motherhood is not a big problem. So which one is it, people? Is, is it a detriment or is it not a big problem? <laughs> And it's also found that uh, most people now reject that the idea that the, that the wife making more than her husband is uh, unhealthy for a relationship. Well, thank God, because Lord knows I'm not making shit. Mm. Today's music, in case you're enjoying it so far, is brought to you by Tony Cash. That was his first song of the day, Pump Ya Breaks. Don't know what it had to do with anything, but we're going to be listening to one more song of uh, Tony Cash. Before we get going, uh, before we get before we take a break, let's take let's do a couple of quick, really quicky stories here. Uh, good news for Mongolia. That's right, I said it. Mongolia. Uh, Mongolia is set to open up 15 Kentucky Fried Chicken eateries uh, within the next couple of years. That's right. Within the next five years, 15 KFCs will be opening up all over Mongolia, making Mongolians fat. I'm uh, glad to hear it, actually. <laughs> And uh, if, if you like Bridget Jones' diary and the other Bridget Jones movie, well, you got good news for you. There's a third Bridget Jones movie coming out, and she'll be mad about the boy. I don't know what that... It's called... Uh, it's, it's the second movie. The first movie was Bridget Jones' Diary, 1996. The second one was Bridget Jones' The End, The Edge of Reason, 1999. And, uh, and we've got a third one coming up. And... Uh, I, I didn't see the first one, I didn't see the second one, and I'm not going to see the third one. You all can enjoy that all on your own. Uh, okay, we got a couple of interesting stories here. Uh, one from Canada, one from Japan, both of them involving mayors. In Canada, the mayor of Toronto, Mayor Rob Ford, denies that he smokes crack and, and that he he also denies that he's an addict and uh, and this is after a video purporting to show him using crack uh, the mayor of Canada's large city did not say whether he has ever used crack but denies being a current user he says the allegations are ridiculous uh, the video has not been released publicly and its authenticity has not been verified uh, Ford has been embroiled in almost weekly conversations about his behavior since being elected in 2010, but these are the most serious allegations he's faced. You know what? It's not a big deal. Really, really. Toronto Mayor Ford, Rob Ford, caught smoking crack. Big deal. Marion Barry did it. He got his job back. Fuck it. And then another mayor, this one from Japan, an outspoken polit politician apologized for saying U.S. troops... Yeah, I love this. Should patronize adult entertainment businesses as a way to reduce sex crimes. But he also defended his remark about Japan's use of sex slaves before and during World War II. Osaka Mayor Toru Hashimoto said his remarks two weeks ago rose from a sense of crisis about cases of sexual assaults by U.S. military personnel on Japanese civilians in Okinawa. Hashimoto also said he had not tried to condone the, a system of so-called comfort women, but rather meant to say military authorities at the time, not only in Japan, but in many other countries, considered it necessary. He denied any intention to avoid Japan's responsibility in its wartime actions. But basically, he's thinking, you know what, in order for uh, American uh, GI assholes from uh, raping our women, uh, why don't they just go to whorehouses? And you know what, I couldn't agree more. We're gonna take a we're gonna take a break now with more Tony Cash and his song Best Man. I'm Joe the Shirt. I'm off the cuff, and I'll be right back. Go again, I'm barreling at it. Now 
I got tracks like heroin addicts And I grew up in the wild Midwest Detroit, Michigan's now in effect So D-Blank, no doubt rock the best Whole crowds get down, my sound is finesse And it's like that, life on the wax I don't even know why cats try to rap Matter of fact, get this, when I spit this script They just piss cause I grip mics like Slick Rick I'm a playboy, anything boy Point blank, just get paid to make noise I ride right past the city and state boys On my way to the stage and I do the thing, boy I'm the best man, now it's on the next man Try to rock like you know how the best can No question, wild Midwest man Better watch where you walk, what you step in I'm the best man, now it's on the next man Try to rock like you know how the best can No question, wild Midwest man Better watch where you walk, what you step in And once again, Joe, the shirt is off the cuff and that was more Tony Cash and his song, Best Man. Nothing like a little rap, rippity rap. Okay, a priest is got mashing a cockroach walking to a bar. <laughs> the reason I bring this up is because uh, these three stories are very prominent in the most recent news articles I have been reading. Uh, God, I don't know where to start first. Well, you know what? Let's start. You know, I do know where to start. Let's start with... The Catholic Church, always one of my faves. Uh, yes, let's start with the Catholic Church. Now, as some of you may have heard, uh, there has been uh, quite a few revelations in the last several years when it comes to the Catholic Church and their uh, policies, official and unofficial, uh, when it comes to certain types of scandals within the church. Uh and when we say scandals, we all know what we're talking about. We're talking about uh, molesting of young children uh, within, by priests and bishops and archbishops and uh, cardinals and what have yous uh, within the church itself. Now, and, the, and we all know about how the Catholic Church has had a very long-standing tradition of when a priest is accused of uh, molesting young boys or several young boys or, or girls for that matter or engaging in sexual activity with another adult which they're not supposed to do uh, the general policy has always been to keep it hush hush sweep it under the carpet and then move that said priest or bishop or wh whoever to a different parish, different uh, you know, a different part of the city, a different city, a different state. Maybe shuffle them over to like the other side of the country, whatever you know. Just it's like, hey, we got a new priest. You know, that's 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 all that's all that's all we're saying. He's he's a new priest from Bakersfield, and uh, let's give them all a big warm welcome. But let's not invite them on camping trips anytime soon. Anyway, now what I find absolutely fascinating is that the church church itself has kept secret files on these scandals since mm, the 1700s, these secret files. Uh, here's a little something for me to read for you from the LA Times. Uh, preparing for his return to the Archdiocese of Los Angeles after six months treatment at a center for pedophile priest. There's a center for this? There's an entire establishment, a building. <laughs> dedicated solely to treating pedophile priests. That is how endemic the problem has become, okay? That is how epidemic the problem has become. That it's not enough to just counsel priests. It's not enough to like, you know, you know, take put them in therapy. We need an entire center just for pedophile priests. Okay. Anyway, continuing, uh, Michael Father Wimp sat down to type out a list of concerns, arrangements for his dog, counseling and support, and, and support groups for himself, and above everything he wrote at the top of the list in 1987, uh, quote, confidentiality, reports from here destroyed, even this paper, end quote. Uh, the reports from the center laid out how he had confessed to molesting young boys. Uh, Wemp's therapist also urged church officials to immediately destroy everything. If the papers fell into the hands of law enforcement, the priest, the archdiocese, and the treatment center could be in serious trouble. Well, yeah. 
I mean, honestly, I, I think that the fact, like I said before, that, that, that there is even such an entity as a treatment center for pedophile priests uh, speaks volumes. But, uh, you know, but, but the, here the therapist is recommending, let's destroy the evidence. You know, that's probably not a bad idea. Uh, but Cardinal Roger Mahoney, you remember him, don't you? And uh, church leaders ignored the warnings. Rather than shred or burn, burn the reports, they preserved them in carefully organized file cabinets where they remained until this year. And this raises the question, why did the church hold on to decades-old evidence of his priest sins? I mean, that's, that's one of the things that I've always found absolutely fascinating about not just the church, but governments in general that hold on to secrets, dark, evil secrets of things that their members have done, things that, you know, would be better, you know, made to disappear uh, for the protection of the church. And uh, the ex according to them, the explanation lies in the centuries Catholic church history and is a tale involving secret betrothals, scandal, even a murder or two. Since the time of the Enlightenment, the Catholic Church, I'm reading this now, has maintained two sets of records, one for the mundane and a second secret archive for matters of a sensitive nature. The cachet known as Subsecreto Files, Canon 489 Files, Confidential Files or C Files, was to be kept under lock and key only for the eyes of the bishop and his trusted few. Uh-huh. Um... Again, you're probably wondering, well, why would the Catholic Church hold on to so much information about their members that could be so damning if it ever came out? Well, uh, if you understand anything about politics, then it's not really that much of a mystery. Uh, you got to keep secrets. You got to hold on to them. You got to keep them somewhere out of sight from the vast majority of people so that when the time comes and you need a favor you go to a you go to a priest you know you go to you go to an individual within your organization say 20 years ago he was a priest and uh, you, you discover that he was uh, molesting young boys but you know what you swept it under the rug you hit it you gave him treatment you moved them to another parish no one's talked about it since then. But you keep the file so that 20 years later, when he's a cardinal and you need a favor, you go, hey, buddy, remember that shit that happened 20 years ago that I covered up? Yeah, I kept the file, though. So, yeah, I need you to do me a favor. And that's why the organizations do this type of thing. That's why the church does it. That's why the American government does it. That's why... Uh, uh, businesses do it, uh, and and businesses and politicians and churches all over the world do this exact same thing. They keep tabs on themselves, on individuals within their organizations, so then when the time comes, they can basically, you know, blackmail them into doing things that they need them to do because they got the goods on them. Now, the earliest mention of the secret archives in the church uh, dates back to the 1700s and an edict on married on marriage issued by Pope Benedict the sixth no the 16th the archives were to bear witness to quote marriages of conscience unions that may be banned under civil law or otherwise scandalous but celebrated by priests in secrecy so in other words priests were sort of secretly getting married secretly having sex secretly having children and families unofficially. This, they were doing this unofficially, okay? And they did this, and uh, the church kept records of it, again, to use against them when necessary. Uh, if you ever watch that TV show, The Borgias, that's pretty much exactly what you're looking at here. I mean, the uh, Pope, the priests, cardinals, bishops, they're all supposed to be married to the church, okay? Thus, no sex. And if, we've, and if you've watched uh, Jeremy Irons on uh, the Borgias, you know this is hardly what I call <laughs> a non-sexual pope, okay? <laughs> he fucks everything. <laughs> and, and, and really, it dates back all the way back to then. 
Uh, Canon 49, the secret file, prescribes that there is to be a safe or a cabinet completely closed and locked, which cannot be removed, to which only the bishop would hold a key. One scholar even suggested in 1954 that files should be kept in modern safes that could withstand concentrated burglarious attacks by drills, sledgehammers, wedges, and mechanical tools. Uh, The files came to hold information about priest alcohol problems, squabbles over parish funds, i.e. stealing, misappropriation of funds, fraud, uh... (laughs) Uh, clerics who had imp- and clerics who had impregnated parishioners. All right. <laughs> so basically, the Catholic Church for now hundreds of years uh, has been keeping secret files on itself of things that priests and other members of the church did that they weren't supposed to do, so they could have leverage against these individuals when necessary. Now. That's not to say that these things weren't happening long before the files came about. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, The Catholic Church is uh, among the biggest pack of hypocrites you're ever going to find on this planet. And you know what? I say the Catholic Church, but I I make this reference to all churches. If, If you are a member of a church, please know, please understand that your church leaders are most likely a big pack of lying hypocrites. So I, I, I don't, I'm not just, you know, uh, I, I trying to isolate the Catholic Church here as the only bad guy. Believe me, uh, Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, uh, any, any, name any religion on the planet, I guarantee you there's a pack of hypocrites leading it. Uh, and, 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 and it goes way beyond sex scandals and pedophiles and, and, and uh, illegal marriages. It also goes to murder. There's a case here about a priest sl- killing a nun and him and his confessing to it and then uh, records of it being written down and kept secret. And I'm like, why? <sighs> the Catholic Church. How do you not love them? I mean, they provide me with so much fodder. <laughs> and keeping that, I got more in the Catholic Church coming up, actually, uh, quite a bit more. But, it, but before that, we're going to take yet another break. Uh, this is more Tony Cash and his song, The Streets. I'm Joe the Shirt. I'll be right back. And I'm still off the cuff. Welcome back once again, everybody. Joe the Shirts off the cuff. Talking a little bit about the Catholic Church. It's actually talking a lot of bit about the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church continues to provide me with so much entertainment. Ah. Actually, before I get into more about the Catholic Church, I have a story here ready, ready to rock and roll, but I have one other story that I really wanted to address before I uh, forget about it. Ah. <sighs> Have you ever traveled, uh, and I don't mean just like, you know, around the country, and, and mind you, there's plenty of great things to see in this country. I mean, there's just so much. To name off the easy ones, I mean, things like the Grand Canyon, 
amazing. Okay, uh, Yosemite, amazing. Joshua Tree, amazing. Mount Rushmore, amazing. Uh, Statue of Liberty, amazing. You know, just and and so 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 many more things that you know I can't even begin to describe. You know, I haven't traveled anywhere near enough in my life. I would like to uh, change that someday, but for right now, I just know and hear about these incredible things that are out there that you can see within your own country. And let's not forget what's beyond your own country. You know, uh, have you ever thought about you know going to going to France and seeing the Eiffel Tower? Uh, have you ever thought about going to, to England and seeing Big Ben? You know, you ever thought about going to uh, China and seeing the Great Wall? You know, We're talking about the only uh, man-made object on Earth visible from space. Okay, you know, ever yeah, have you ever gone to Hawaii to check out the volcanoes there? And have you ever gone to Egypt to check out the pyramids? Well, you know who has? Ding Jinghao has been to the, to Luxor and seen the pyramids of Egypt. And how do we know this? Because he tagged graffiti into the pyramid, <laughs> into a temple actually in Luxor. He apparently just took a, I don't know what he, what he used a knife or a screwdriver or something or whatever and and just etched the words in Chinese. Ding Jinghao was here. Okay, so you, you're you from any other country on the planet, and you go to Egypt to see a 3,500-year-old temple, something that's been there since almost the dawn of modern man, okay? A, a time period on Earth where religion and science and old and new cultural mores were fluctuating back and forth where personal freedoms and slavery were already being discussed where art and science were at odds with each other and you decide <laughs> that rather than just be in awe of the majesty of this near 4,000 year old relic, that you want to tag it instead. Uh, how'd you like to be his parents, by the way? Uh, according to this, uh, let's see, uh, uh, Ding Jinao's uh, chagrin's mother over the weekend said that her son is now 15 and had carved the graffiti a few years ago. Uh, quote, we want to apologize to the Egyptian people and to people who have paid attention to this case across China, she told a Nanjing newspaper. The boy's father begged internet users to stop hounding the teenager. Quote, this is too much pressure for him to take, he told the newspaper. Uh, the sa his same, same father also uh was quoted as saying that he is uh, deeply ashamed and apologizes for his son's actions and can only blame bad parenting on his part and his and his and his wife's part for uh, the incident. Well, yeah. <laughs> Now, the Chinese language graffiti was discovered at Luxor this month by Chinese tourists who posted a photograph on a microblog which he deplored the behavior of his countrymen. Uh, quote, I'm so embarrassed that I want to hide myself, the microblogger wrote last week. Um, apparently, this is not an isolated incident when it comes to dealing with Chinese tourists. Chinese tourists now account for like the largest number of tourists uh, across the globe. More Chinese people, uh, since their economy has picked up considerably in the last 10 years, are going abroad more and more often. We're talking about 83 million Chinese people going abroad every year. 
and spending mm, somewhere in the realm of $102 billion tourism money. And while the money is welcome, the Chinese are not. Uh, here's a quote for you. They speak loudly in public, carve characters on tourist attractions, cross the road when the traffic lights are still red, spit anywhere, and engage in some other uncivilized behavior. It damages the image of the Chinese people and has, has a very bad impact. This is from, end quote, this is from Vice Premier Wang Yang. Uh, the Chinese have become the world's leading tourists, 83 million, uh, spending 102 million, but the bad behavior comes with them. Uh, Here's a story. Here's a few couple of stories here, actually. In Hong Kong, a child was allowed to defecate in a, in a subway car. In Paris, wealthy Chinese people drive sales clerks in luxury boutiques to tears with their imperious behavior. I mean, you think, uh, you know, Paris Hilton's a bitch when she goes shopping? Uh-uh. Uh, quote, in general, Chinese tourists are too loud. When they go into a hotel, they talk nonstop at the top of their lungs, and they swarm into elevators and the doors open. He, uh, let's see, uh, this is from Li Dezi, a Guangdong-based tour agent who brings Chinese groups abroad. He said he was embarrassed when he was in Japan to see signs written only in Chinese advising people to flush the toilet. This is how nasty other countries think the Chinese are, that they feel that they need to remind them to flush the toilet. Mm -hmm. See that? And you thought it was just us Americans that were considered bad tourists and pure street trash when we go abroad. Nope. Chinese are even worse. <laughs> Back to the Catholic Church. I'm going to do this as a quickie because I have one more story I really want to get to. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll get to... You know what? I'm going to ditch the Catholic Church for right now because I have so much more I want to get to. I want to get into scouts. Uh, you guys may have heard, actually, that... Uh, Boy Scouts of America have lifted the ban on gay scouts. There was a vote. The 103-year-old organization took a vote, and and by a vote of uh, and with, with uh, 1,232 votes, 757 of those votes were in favor of lifting the ban on gay scouts. Obviously, a lot of people are very, very happy about this, and a lot of people are very, very, very angry about this. Um, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, that's really great. You know, you, if, if you are young, if you're a young person, if you're a young uh, man, a boy, and you have uh, questions about your sexuality, or you already know that you are, in fact, gay, uh, you can now join the Boy Scouts and be perfectly accepted as a member of the Boy Scouts. The other side of that, obviously, is that uh, they still don't allow adult members into scouts. Now, uh, what this means is you can join the Bo you can join the Boy Scouts of America. Start out as a Cub Scout, become a Boy Scout, then keep moving up. You can be move all the way up to become an Eagle Scout. But as soon as you turn eighteen and you're gay, you're out. You're done. You gotta go because we don't allow gay scout leaders as adults in the Boy Scouts. You gotta go, homo. That's what they're saying. And that's unfortunate. Uh, and at the same time, I, I want to applaud the Boy Scouts for this. I mean, there's already uh, some a lot of backlash on this. A lot of people are saying, a lot of Scoutmasters that are already out there, people that have been in Scouts for 60 years, okay, are saying that it's gonna destroy the Scouts, it's gonna ruin the Scouts. Uh, what are we going to do if you have two 15-year-old boys that are both gay and we're going on a camping trip? Are they allowed to, uh, you know, go together on the trip? Are they allowed to share a tent? I mean, what's the deal here? You know, you don't allow boys and girls to go on uh, trips, you know, on the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. You, it's no, you know, they're not allowed to do this. But, you know, you have two gay Scouts. Are we going to allow them to go together? I guess you have to really question whether or not the whole, you know, Honor and honesty thing uh, really applies to all scouts. Um, I said it's it's a half-assed measure. I get that, but it is a measure. It is a step in the right direction. I mean, a lot of people uh, were like you know uh, jumping for joy when they repealed uh, "Don't Ask, Don't Tell" in the U.S. military. 
But the fact of the matter is they didn't really repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. They replaced Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Because you remember, for the longest time, if you were gay in the military, your superior officers were allowed to ask you, Hey, Private, are you a fag? And it was your sworn duty to give him an honest answer. And he goes, well, well, yes, sir, I am, in fact, a homosexual. Well, get the fuck out. You're fired. Get out of here. Dishonorable discharge, you fucking faggot. You're done. You're out. And that was it. Later on, Bill Clinton, you know, signed into law the Don't Ask, Don't Tell initiative, which was basically meant that you're a homosexual in the military. Um, no one's allowed to ask you about your sexual preferences, and you are not required to answer any questions about your sexual preferences. Okay, this was still not being allowed to be openly gay and serve in the military, but you were allowed to be gay and serve in the military without being punished for it because nobody could ask you about it. It was a step. That's what it was. Just like this, it's a step in the right direction. Uh, I do not uh, decry uh, Don't Ask, Don't Tell. I thought it was a really great first step, and I think that people that poo-pooed it we're not looking at it uh, in the big picture. And like I said, they didn't really repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. They just replaced it with a law that really does make sense, which is you're allowed to be gay and serve in the military. Boom, that's it. That's all. That's not a problem. And you don't have to hide it. Anybody can... If people want to ask you about it, hey, are you, a, are you a fag? Yeah, and I'll kick your ass too. Yeah, there you go. Beautiful. And that's what's happening with the Boy Scouts now. You know, they are just beginning to like try to get through it here it's not a tough it's not an easy thing for them to get through you know we're talking about uh an organization that for the longest time you know it is an it is a religiously based organization which has a lot to do with the catholic church but right now the uh biggest contributors to uh the boy scouts america is actually the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints that's right the mormons and the Mormons, by the way, support the resolution. They believe that you should be able to be gay and in scouts. You know, and they have, and as far as I can tell, they have no issue with gay scout masters either. So, uh, really, I think it's just a matter of time before the Boy Scouts of America uh, begin to allow uh, gay scout leaders, you know, gay Eagle Scouts, adult gay, uh, you know, scout masters. It's just a matter of time. But you have to allow for baby steps. And you know what? It's never going to happen as fast as you would like. And it's always going to happen way faster than the opponents of it would like. All right? So you, you, you got to take, take what you can get here. And, 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 and it, is it a baby step? Yeah, it's a small step. It's just not a baby. It's a really big step. You know? It's letting you know that as a child, you are allowed to be who you are and explore who you are, and you are allowed to be a scout. You're allowed to go camping. You're allowed to learn how to survive in the wild, and you're allowed to learn about nature and camping and fishing and make lifelong friends and hopefully not get molested by your scoutmaster. That's, kind of, that's, that's, that's a biggie for me, I think, right there. And that's actually my time for right now. You know what? I think what I'm going to do... I'm going to take a little bit of a longer break right now, but then I'm going to come back. I'm going to do another fucking show. How about that? How about I do another show because I feel like I owe you guys a little something, something out there, all right? And when I come back, we'll talk about, we'll, we'll keep talking about this and we'll go back to the Catholic Church and God damn it, I am going to talk about cockroaches. That's fucking right. That's right. You can't hold me. You can't stop me. Cockroaches coming up on the next Joe the Shirts Off the Cuff. And this is our last song by Tony Cash. It's called Smoke and Drink. That's right, motherfuckers. JTS OTC. Smoke, drink, drink and smoke. Put a couple on that homie, you can take a toe. Yeah, drink, smoke, smoke and drink. Yeah, all through the week. Great goose of Hennessy. Smoke, drink, drink and smoke. Put a couple on that homie, you can take a toe. Got a drink, smoke, smoke and drink. Yeah, all through the week. Great goose of Hennessy. Smoke. Drink, drink and smoke. Split.
split from the club with some chick I don't know. Moving slow mo, sitting pretty on some low pros. Most hoes hit coke by the boatload. Get them home, won't be anywhere they won't go. With a swole nose, pussy getting bulldozed. Don't sniff, but I'd rather blow smoke. Get drunk, then bust in a hoe's throat. I can drink, smoke, and be broke as fuck. I'll be up in the club before it opens up. And I'm no joke in a freestyle circle. Jesus.